It's time for Thriller Thursdays here on the Mutual Audio Network, if you dare. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. And now, episode 137, Destination Destiny. What do you mean you know we're IDF? Whatever gave you that idea? You had me fooled at first, but after a while, I could tell you were not Elite Force material. I'm with the Major on this one. I think you are making a grave error accusing an Elite Force commando of being IDF. I'm surprised he hasn't drawn on you and cut you down. Exactly. That's what a true Rage commando would have done. This is an example of just one of the things I've observed. Your two troops, for example. Carlos and Garcia? What about them? They are too lax to be Rage soldier. Their constant sniping at one another is unprofessional in my opinion. If they did that in the commando unit, their leader would have them duel it out with laser pistols at 20 paces. Interesting observation, Lieutenant. I'm curious to know that if you suspected this, why haven't you taken any action? You had several opportunities to wipe us all out, yet you did nothing. So you are IDF. Chafra, disarm him. There's really no need to do that, Major Witten. As you said, I could have dispatched all of you several times. I'm sure that would have put me in good stead with either Lister or Lord Zokar. So why didn't you? My people never really bought into the whole rage thing. Weren't to fly and fight. Why do you think you found me in a bar back there? Our ships are equipped with detectors. There was no way I could fly for at least a day. My guess is, you knew we were done for in Wi-Fi's eyes. Exactly. So what are you going to do with me? That will depend on what you do from here on in. I'll hold on to your weapon for now. But let me warn you, one false move and you're done for. Fair enough, but I must warn you, Colonel Zandu is the former director of the Elite Forces. When he sees you, he'll know you are IDF. We appreciate the heads up, but we already knew that. Ah, the secret text I noticed you getting. Someone has warned you. Tell me, Major, do you plan on just walking into camp and then wait for Lister or Wi-Fi to show up? We're working out a plan now. Translation, you don't have a plan. I might be able to help. Go on. There are some former soldiers who may remember me. I was decorated before the whole Corps. I will vouch for you and your people. I can't guarantee that will work. The Elite Force soldiers were well known among the troops. They may soon realize that no one knows any of you. We'll just tell them that we're new to Rage since they left. That might work. It will have to, otherwise we're in a heavy fire fight. True. So can I have my weapon back? In due time. And if a beast comes out in the jungle to eat us? Well then, Lieutenant, we'll see just how fast you can run. You know what bugs me about this whole thing, aside from the fact that we're about to die? There's something worse than dying? Zandu. You mean the fact that he didn't join us? All of this talk about the dangers of the trip and what might happen when we get there, and he goes and parks his lazy you-know-what on the boat. I imagine he's already back in Tyrannus, downing a cold one. Yeah, I thought it odd he stayed back. I was counting on his familiarity with these mercenaries to be a buffer for us. Let's make the switch. Okay. We're going to make the switch now. Okay, they've stopped rowing. Switch. They're rowing again. Why don't you get some rest? Well, that's not going to happen. Gabby, please don't tell me you have a plan. I have a plan. I asked you not to tell me. Hear me out. There is a galaxy-wide manhunt for Lister. You know the IDF will investigate the C-10 crash. Yes, I know. And someone will pick us up on your coded transmission for a hijacking. Listen, you can't count on something like that. All of my eggs aren't in that basket. Eggs? What's this got to do with eggs? It just means there are other possibilities. Their investigation will include a thorough examination of both parties involved. They should discover that I separated from service a few years ago and that Lenora's character doesn't even exist anywhere in their records. So you think they'll put two and two together and realize what? You and Lenora stole the plane, then crashed it? Well, that's the other thing. They're going to quickly discover that it's not the same plane and start digging deeper. 
So why stage a crash, they'll ask. And I'm sure you'll have their answer. A staged wreck site. Two phony pilots. A coded hijacking call. All headed west where Rage has a holdout. Lister escaped headed in that direction. Yeah, I'd say they're looking for us. Well, we did disappear with the Ulysses from Titan's main port. Put that all together and we've been hijacked, headed for Tyrannus. Even if that's true, what makes you think that someone from the IDF is rowing up this river right behind us? Don't forget, Captain. I was one of them for a good while. I know they'll be thorough, which means they will investigate. Their investigation will bring them to Tyrannus. Once there, I'm sure they'll go undercover and ask lots of questions. And their investigation will bring them up Death River to rescue us. Really, Gabby, what planet are you from? Now that's a silly question to ask. You know what I mean. You talked about eggs not being in one basket. Well, I think they are. And I think you're crazy if you plan on leaving this canoe. Well, look at the alternative. What do you think will happen when we get to this mercenary camp? What use would we be to them? I don't know, but I do know that leaving this canoe is certain death. Well, at least I'll be in control of my own destiny, not leaving things to chance with a bunch of lunatic former rage soldiers. So you're doing this, you're slipping into this monster-infested river, and hope someone will come along before nightfall. I'm calculating that there is enough light that I can make my way along the riverbank and get back to the mouth of the river before dark. That's why you established this rest period where one of us lays down out of sight. Pretty genius, right? Not even close. What do I tell them when they discover you're gone? Tell them I got hungry and went for pizza. Went for what? Pizza. You never had pizza? If I knew what that was, I could answer that. I'll make one for you when we get back together. I make a great pizza. Back home, they call me Pizza Girl. Well, Pizza Girl, looks like I'm not going to change your mind. We have an outcropping of trees coming up. You can slip out and hide behind them until we turn this bend coming up. Perfect. Gabby, nothing about this plan is perfect. I'll create a ruckus after you are hidden and say a beast took you. And how are we going to do that? Pound the water with my paddle and scream that something took you. Say you had your hand in the water cooling off and you're taken in a second. All right, go. I must say, that was an impressive facility. You should have seen it back in the day. Thousands of soldiers living there, ready to fight on short notice. Thousands, you say? Yes. Then there must be more to the facility than what we saw. Oh, yes. We were only in the control section. There was much more deeper below us. Most interesting. This would be a good outpost when we bring Rage back to its original glory. That would be ironic. How so? That facility was built to fight Rage. And now, it will be instrumental in bringing Rage back. I must ask, you know Lord Lister is on his way to the encampment. How do you propose to deal with him? I am not concerned with him. He's old and weak. He has nothing to offer them. I still have a cache of riches to pay them. They will go where the money is. I'm sure the Lord Lister has something up his sleeve. I don't think he'd go in there without a plan of some sort. It is not of your concern. They will know who their real leader is. Yes, but what will they do to him? Do to us? It is simple. They will choose me and we will begin our rebuilding program. Why does this concern you? These are not the same soldiers who fought with you during the Galactic War. They've moved on. Most have changed their names and their identities. The ones left in Tyrannus have jobs. They're merchants, teachers, even some are local government officials. And what of the ones in the incumbent? I'm sure you are counting on the fact that these former soldiers could not conform to a peaceful civilian life. That is exactly what I am counting on. They need structure, purpose, and a steady income. It would seem so, but it's been my experience that they wish to lead a simple life. I believe you call it living off the grid. They rely on no one except for occasional supplies from Brady the Merchant, mostly ammunition. For the jungle beasts. And unwanted guests, like when you and everyone else show up at the same time. 
everyone else? The town was buzzing with talk of many strangers, all inquiring about the encampment. And that is a good thing. And why so? Because then I will have all my enemies in one basket. Ms. Wilson, I didn't expect to see you here today. I'm all caught up on license applications and took a sick day. I'm sorry, Ms. Wilson, but I haven't gotten very far in your case. I didn't think you would have, so that's why I brought this. My recorder cassette. You do realize that there are more modern media, don't you? Hey, look, why, why go and buy something new when the old one works just fine? You still have a tape deck that plays these things? Of course I do. But why are you bringing it to me? Did, did you get a call recorded? I sure did. I got another strange number calling me, so I recorded the call. Ah, great. Let me put it in the player. Whoever it is, they disguise their voice. Someone's going through an awful lot of trouble to scare me. Here we go. Hello? Don't be alarmed, Miss Wilson, but we need to talk. You're telling me not to be alarmed, and you've disguised your voice. What is this all about? It's a matter of national security, Miss Wilson. Don't be ridiculous. National security. Right. You know I work for the Maryland State Police. I have a security clearance. Not at this level, you don't. Look, don't play games with me. I work for one of the best law enforcement agencies in the U.S. And if you don't back off, they will be all over this. I don't care if you're with the CIA or the NSA. You can't harass me like this. Don't threaten us, Claire. We know you've already sought the help of former detective Jim Barnes. How could you know that? Have you been following me? Because of the nature of this investigation, yes, you have been under surveillance. What right do you have? National security, Miss Wilson. That is what gives us the right. You can tell Detective Barnes to stand down, or his business will be deep six. Oh, really? I'd like to know how you plan to pull his license when I'm the one who issues it. Tell him it is in his best interest to drop the case. We will contact you with a time and place to meet. We need to debrief you concerning what you saw. But I didn't see anything. We will be in touch. Well, that was interesting. What should I do? Wait for the call. Now, once they do, contact me, but don't use the phone. If they uh, indeed are CIA or NSA, you can bet your phone and social media is being monitored. Go to your workplace or maybe a friend's house and call me from there. But you heard them say you better stay out of it. Or you're done as a P.I. Ah, don't you worry about me, Miss Wilson. Let's just say I have some pretty powerful friends in high places. Are we there yet? I can't believe you just asked me that. Please relax. Captain Nate is following the situation. He'll notify us of any change in the situation. Tony, you copy? Wait a minute. I thought you said the radio wasn't safe. For us to call Nate, it would require a stronger signal. Obviously, Nate has notified Wit that Wi-Fi is out of range for intercepting our transmission. This is Agent Simon. Go ahead, Major. Nate gave us the all-clear to transmit. He has additional info for us. Over. Go ahead. I'm ready to copy. Over. Nate talked with Titan Ground Control, and the satellite he is using has infrared capabilities. He's currently accessing the satellite with the proper string command. Over. This is excellent news. Now he'll be able to track warm bodies hidden in the jungle. Over. Stand by. He's sending me an update. Wait one. This is good news. Now we can track those creatures in the jungle as well as the others. Nate now has infrared eyes on us and will follow us. Initial reports show no creatures in the immediate area. Over. Copy that. What's the situation with the group ahead of us? Over. Nate says that he can only pick up three bodies. He's doing a quick grid search to look for the other missing one. I'll notify you if he finds it. Whip out. A missing body? That doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. Let's hope that someone made an escape. To where? They couldn't swim back because the thrashing would stir up the bottom dwellers. 
If they tried to walk back, they wouldn't make it before dark. It's my guess that this is a calculated move by Gabby. The Ulysses pilot? She was smart enough to leave us the clues. I'm betting she's counting on the fact that we are following them. Simon, missing person located. They're right in front of you in an outcropping of trees and logs. Over. Copy. We'll advise upon contact. Out. Wave your paddle side to side over your head. We want her to know that we know she's there. It's working. I see a head popping up and she's waving back. Paddle, Sam. Paddle. Hey, Tony, Simon, I presume, and Sam. Gabriella, I presume. That's an unusual place to wait for transportation. How did you know we would be behind you? <sighs> I was counting on the fact that you would follow my clues. Lenora told me a lot about you. And Sam, how did you recognize me? We investigated the crash. We started with the flight control office. They pulled your records along with a photo. And since Simon was such good friends with Lenora, we showed them her photo, which they ID'd. Good friends? Are you serious? Well, acquaintances, maybe. Honestly, I don't think that woman has any friends. So, how did you escape? Captain Tam and I would take turns lying down in the canoe to rest. When it was my turn, I slipped overboard and climbed up on this debris pile. Tam splashed the water with her paddle and screamed that something took me, although I was afraid they'd double back. Not to worry, we have eyes in the sky. They are proceeding northward. Oh yeah? Eyes in the sky? Captain Nate is in a fixed orbit in the Mercury. He's been following us with the Titan surveillance satellite. He's got access to infrared. Ah, so that's how you knew I was in this debris pile. So were you able to learn of their plan? How are they going to approach the mercenaries? The best I could get out of them was that they would promise them a big bounty. From where? The IDF Reserve Bank. That's nuts. Even I wouldn't try to rob that. Sam's right. That would be a suicide mission. I think he's counting on a couple of things. One, his huge ego. He is convinced that they will once again follow their old leader. Two, he plans to defeat Wi-Fi, gain control of his ship where there is a monetary stash, a quick payday and they'll follow him like the old days. I see. What they don't realize is that many of the former soldiers are out here to get away from that life. What can I say? The man's got an ego. Speaking of egos, any word on where Wi-Fi is? According to Nate, he, Mondu and Sprague are traveling up the main road. So Lizard Boy is with Wi-Fi. That's not going to sit well with Lister. I'm thinking we should just lay back and get into position where we could watch the show when these two meet. Major Wit is with a rage pilot, Jaffa the Bounty Hunter, and two of his marines. They're in an all-terrain vehicle going up through the swamp. I agree with Sam. We need to get a front row seat and watch the show. Surprisingly enough, I agree with both of you. I have a plan. Wit, this is Simon. Over. Go ahead, Simon. We picked up the missing body. It's the Ulysses pilot, Gabby. Over. Is she alive? What happened? Over. Gabby's fine. She was counting on me being behind her. Evidently, she and Tam are bargaining chips if the IDF interferes. After that, they will be of no use to Lister. Over. Was she able to give you any good intel on Lister? Over. Yes. We are formulating a plan. It looks as if Wi-Fi and Lister are headed for a confrontation. You and I need to coordinate with Nate. I have a few ideas on what we can do when we arrive. Over. I'll contact Nate and tell him we need close monitoring near the end. Let me know when you have a better idea of what you're planning. Over. Will do. Simon out. Well, that was interesting. I have to give it to Gabby. It takes a lot of intestinal fortitude to do what she did. Either that or pure recklessness. I think it was more of a calculated risk. As far as Simon making plans, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Remember, Jafra, he's not here as a competing bounty hunter. We can always reject or modify his plan if we don't like it. Let's at least hear him out. In the meantime, if you have any ideas, I'd be open to hearing them. I'll let you know, Major. Lieutenant, I didn't see you coming. 
We were just talking about our plan of action when we arrive on site. I heard you say we can always reject or modify his plan. Who is he? He is a very capable bounty hunter named Tony Simon. Who is also a member of the IDF. Tony is following Lister up Death River and they picked up an escapee. She's the pilot of the Ulysses. I know her. I was sent to shoot her down. And you failed, which is why you are with us now. Do we have any idea how close the others are? Yes, Nate just updated me. Lister's canoes are just past the halfway point. Simon is following about a standard mile behind. Wi-Fi is within 15 standard miles of the compound. I think whatever plan you make, I need to be part of it. I am a rage fighter. They would trust me. Until they found out who we were, and that you're with us. I would still have the first contact to feel out the situation. That's if we beat Wi-Fi there. If he's still 15 out, we'll arrive before him. I'm going to advise Tony that you are working with us. Perhaps he can incorporate that into his plan. If he doesn't, Major, we will. results already, are you? No, but I have some. Claire just left. She brought in a cassette. She got another call. You know, instead of me asking what does it say, you could modernize your equipment to digital and just send it to me. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time. Okay then. What does it say? The caller disguised his voice. He kept repeating that it was a matter of national security. National security? That doesn't make sense. I just want to make sure that uh, we're on the same page. So why do you think it doesn't make sense? Number one, someone from the CIA, NSA, or Homeland would not call. They would contact her personally. Agreed. And number two, why disguise their voice? My thoughts exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Wait a minute, Jim. I think Kelly has something for me. Jim? Go ahead. I don't think it's any of our national security agencies. Kelly just pulled a photo off Claire's social media. Her last several photos show her standing around the Annapolis Stip. I think the IDF is making these calls. As Claire discovered the Annapolis Stip, who will arrive at the mercenary camp first? And what is Agent Simon's plan? And will Wit go along with it? Find out the answers to these questions and more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles the standoff. You can listen to classical and brand new audio dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre. And the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night.